Hey everybody, it's Gareth with FCP. Today, I'm gonna to take you through the steps and how to replace the rear ball joint on an E39. Uh, also gonna be replacing the rear intercooler link as well as the rear sway bar link. So, let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is remove the through bolt that goes from the outside of the swing arm to the inside of the swing arm. This goes straight to the middle of the ball joint and the integral link. Uh, there's a 24 millimeter self-locking hex nut on this side towards the uh, inside of the car and this is an 18 millimeter on the outside. Now there's a decent amount of tension on this uh, bolt because the swing arm uh, due to the inner bushings here so take a hammer start tapping it out just gonna run it out now the uh, so the occasional issue you might have with a sway bar link is when you're trying to spin the lock nut off of it you'll notice that the actual ball joint is spinning with it I can see this one moving on the inside um, Sometimes the sway bar link will have like an Allen key or a Torx uh, key um, on the outside that you can put some sort of socket into to hold it in place. Uh, for BMWs, there's usually a flat spot that you can put a box wrench on. In this case, it's going to be two 16 millimeters for an E39. And there's a little bit of a gap in the back of your swing arm where you can simply latch onto it. Uh, the theory is you want to pull this down so you can gain access to the ball joint because you're going to have to press that out. I do not like to pull this down. Uh, reason being, you're stressing the inside bushings more than you normally will. Uh, the other thing is if you remove these inner eccentrics, um, you also do run the risk of changing your alignment. So what you can do, and this is what I, I personally prefer to do, is to clean this down. And I'm going to mark it where the eccentrics are lined up because I'll actually be removing this bolt and I'll be loosening the bolt here, which is a 16 millimeter, and this entire swing arm will just droop right down. But BMW says that if you're doing this rear ball joint, you should have alignment checked anyway. So to me, it doesn't really matter one way or the other. I'd rather spare the bushings on a $400 part than take a shortcut and take a vice grip and damage the mating area here. Like I said, I'm gonna have this car aligned anyway after this, but for now, I'm gonna mark it as close to where it is right now to make it easier later. Um, you can do this with a Sharpie. You're gonna take an 18 millimeter box wrench, an 18 millimeter socket, and you're gonna remove this bolt. You can see as I turn the bolt, it's pulling this arm in. It's done by this washer here, this offset washer. Kind of cool. Make sure you keep these together. You'll be needing them later when you put the car back together. And then with a 16 millimeter socket, you're just gonna loosen this bolt here. There are no alignments for this one, so don't worry about it, just loosen it up. Uh, with an 18 millimeter socket, going to unbolt the integral length, the top of the integral length from the wheel carrier. Uh, now we can go ahead and remove the integral length. Simply, it's kind of be hooked on the ball joint a little bit, so you may have to wrestle with it, but it comes right out. This right here is called the integral length. And now, I'm gonna go ahead and let the swing arm hang. See, now I have easy access to the ball joint right here. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of play in this one. Um, this is really bad, actually. But it's 134,000 miles original ball joint, so it uh, definitely lived its purpose. On the back of the ball joint, uh, there's a snap ring, which secures it in place, prevents it from backing it out. Um, these can get pretty stuck on. So I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of penetrant.
I'm not trying to put a ton on it. What'll happen on these is you'll have a lot of corrosion that builds up behind, you can see the rust. Just sort of seizes it. Uh, if you can find like a small screwdriver or chisel, and if, as soon as you get behind this, then you start sliding it up, uh, eventually it'll let go of its grip. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this boot. It's not needed anymore. Simply pries right off. And then you can see all the grease that's packed inside. Um, essentially the reason why they call this a ball joint, not a bushing, is because this piece is allowed to move independently. What happens is uh, that grease will start to push out and you'll get this wear. So once that happens, you need to replace it. Now there is a specific BMW tool to remove this joint. I know many of the viewers who are gonna watch this video are not gonna spend the 250, 300, 400 hours for that tool. Some places you can rent them from, but uh, availability is somewhat questionable. But you can't go down to your local auto parts store and pick up a tool like this. It's basically a giant C-clamp with a bunch of adapters. You have to play around with these to find the right sizes, but trust me, the right sizes are normally in the box and you should be able to press out the old um, ball joint and press in the new one. So I'll show you how to do it using this tool. Uh, the BMW tool works in a very similar way though. You're gonna need a uh, cup that's wider than the ball joint coming out and then another cup which is just about the right size to sit on the back of the joint and push it out. All right, depending on the type of tool you're using, uh, you, you'll have to use different socket sizes, so I can't really help you on this. But in this case, it's a 22 millimeter, and we're just gonna start cranking on it. Here's the old joint. Like I said, you can see the amount of play in it. That's gonna cause uneven tire wear. Also, with some handling issues, I feel like the rear end is kind of skating around. Um, so if you have any kind of play like this in the rear suspension, check your ball joints. Uh, like I said, this is 134,000 miles. which probably should have been replaced a long time ago, but this is an example of a really worn one. I'm just gonna take some uh, 80 grit sandpaper here and clean out the inside of the board here where the ball joint is pressed into. This will uh, make installing the new ball joint a little bit easier. And also prevent the new one from getting stuck in. You now need to press this back in the bore. The flange part sits on the outside here. So I'm just gonna let it sit in there for now. You'll need to find a, a cup to press it and a cup to receive it. Uh, in this case, I'm using the exact same ones I used to press it out. This one should fit right over the dust boot like that. Before you start pressing this in, uh, you're just gonna make sure that the ball joint is sitting evenly. If it's a little off center, it might be difficult to press in or it might not press in at all. So just make sure that it's sitting fairly flush. Before doing anything else, just making sure that this has been pressed in evenly, it has. It's uh, completely flush all the way around, so the bottom bevel is meeting the wheel carrier perfectly. So we're all set in that, and now you have to install a snap ring. Just cleaning up any excess corrosion around where the snap ring is going to go.
You could use a pair of snap ring pliers, but because there's no hole to get the snap ring plier into, you need a very specific set. Uh, just use a screwdriver and keep pushing in around as you go around. Eventually, it'll see it itself. All right, uh, these sway barn links are okay, kind of. I'm gonna go ahead and replace them anyway. Might as well since I have easy access to it. Uh, once again, same thing with the top, a 16 millimeter box wrench on the flat spot. Just have to find it real quick. Sorry if my hand is blocking the camera. And then obviously if you have a question about orientation, just double check the other side. See the flat spots easily right there, that's what I'm talking about. You can get a box wrench on that. We'll also be installing a brand new uh, integral link. You can see there's a little lip on the ball joint here. The integral link simply fits over that, and then it's going to bolt to the top piece. But I'm going to bring the swing bar, the swing arm back up into place. Now you're going to need to run this long bolt back through. Should stay in place once it's lined up. Take the bolt. And start wiggling it in. And then you need to obviously make up sure it lines up on this side. According to BMW's TIS, you should replace this locking nut. And then we're going to take the integral link bolt. That's just the uh, integral link bolt right there. I'm not going to tighten that fully yet. We still have to torque that with the vehicle ride height later. So I'm just going to start threading this in by hand. It just needs to be hand tight for now. Now this eccentric washer can only go on one way. It's gonna match the other side every time. This is our locking nut that goes on the outside. I'm gonna thread that now. So I'm gonna bring it into alignment. I made sure the other mark on the other side is where it needs to be. I'm gonna move it right there into place. And then using my ratchet as a counter hole, I'm simply gonna tighten the nut. And that'll hold the alignment in place. Usually uh, new sway bar links come with hardware. Just gonna install the new 16 millimeter nut. Once again, you're probably gonna have to use a 16 millimeter box wrench as a counter hold. Now with the uh, rear axle at ride height, I'm going to go ahead and uh, torque the spec here. Uh, this nut right here is uh, supposed to be torqued at 189 foot-pounds of torque. This is why it's really important to tighten suspension parts at ride height because this was tight up in the air, but it's not going to be tight at ride height, you take a lot of the stress off the bolt. Last but not least, you have to torque the integral link bolt to 77 foot-pounds of torque. I think we're tight. All right guys, and that's how you replace a rear ball joint on an E39 5 Series. 
Uh, this process is going to be fairly similar on E38 and E60, a lot of the newer E90s, uh, pretty much any newer BMW for that matter. Um, so if you have some weird tire wear coming from the rear, or um, you've noticed that the handling isn't quite there, the, like the rear end is wobbling back and forth, it's probably because of that ball joint. Uh, but as always, if you do have any questions, please feel free to give us a call. We can be reached at 877-634-0063. Thank you for watching.